Hi everybody, it's Grandma Kate or Katie or Miss Ingersoll or however you might know me. Um, there's a lot of different names that we all can have as we go through life and so I've had many different roles to play with all of you. Some of you I was your teacher or your friend or caregiver or uh, neighbor or whatever. So it's wonderful to spend to story time with all of you. Someone had asked me in a uh, earlier post how I have grandchildren when I don't have any children of my own. And so I just thought I'd take a moment to let everybody know my significant other has two children and they have children. So I'm very blessed that I have bonus grandchildren uh, that were not mine by birth, but through the relationships that we have. And a lot of times our family is more than just the people that we were born with who are in our circle, but those that we come to know and love. So it's wonderful to spend story time with all of you too. We've all become like a little family too through the stories that we share. And of course, as I've let you know in the past, Charlotte's Web is one of my very favorite stories. And today we're going to be reading two chapters. Chapter eight is very short. So I'll be reading chapters eight and nine. If you wanna grab your books, you can read along with me. Uh, do you remember the last time I read to you at the end of chapter seven, Wilbur got some terribly bad news that uh, Mr. Zuckerman and Mr. Arable and even Lurby were planning on uh, butchering him or killing him at harvest time. And he became very upset as, as I would as well. But Charlotte told him that she would try to help him and try to save him. And so we'll see what happens in the next couple of chapters. Um, as the story continues. The, the first chapter I'll be reading is chapter eight. It's called A Talk at Home. And this very short chapter takes place at, at Fern's house. Remember Fern is that young girl that, that saved Wilbur when he was very little. On Sunday morning, Mr. and Mrs. Arable and Fern were sitting at breakfast in the kitchen. Avery had finished and was upstairs looking for his slingshot. Did you know that Uncle Homer's goslings had hatched? Asked Fern. How many? Asked Mr. Arable. Seven, replied Fern. There were eight eggs, but one didn't hatch, and the goose told Templeton she didn't want it anymore, so he took it away. The goose did what? Asked Mrs. Arable, gazing at her daughter with a queer, worried look. Told Templeton she didn't want the egg anymore, repeated Fern. Uh, who is Templeton? asked Mrs. Arable. He's the rat, replied Fern. None of us like him very much. Uh, who's us? asked Mr. Arable. Oh, everybody in the barn cellar. Wilbur and the sheep and the lambs and the goose and the gander and the goslings and Charlotte and me. Charlotte? said Mrs. Arable. Who's Charlotte? She's Wilbur's best friend. She's terribly clever. What does she look like? Asked Mrs. Arable. Well, said Fern thoughtfully, she has eight legs. All spiders do, I guess. Charlotte is a spider, asked Fern's mother. Fern nodded, a big gray one. She has a web across the top of Wilbur's doorway. She catches flies and sucks their blood. Wilbur adores her. Does he really? said Mrs. Arable rather vaguely. Vaguely means like, um, like, well, like she'd say like, oh, oh, really? Like not very clear, not very sure. She was staring at Fern with a worried expression on her face. Oh yes, Wilbur adores Charlotte, said Fern. Do you know what Charlotte said when the goslings hatched? I haven't the faintest idea, said Mr. Arable. Tell us. Well, when the first gosling stuck its little head out from under the goose, I was sitting on my stool in the corner and Charlotte was on her web. She made a speech. She said, I am sure that every one of us here in the barn cellar will be gratified to learn that after four weeks of unremitting effort and patience on the part of the goose, she now has something to show for it. Don't you think that was a pleasant thing for her to say? I'm impressed she remembered all of that, aren't you? Yes, I do, said Mrs. Arable. And now, Fern, it's time to get ready for Sunday school and tell Avery to get ready. 
and this afternoon you can tell me more about what goes on in Uncle Homer's barn. Aren't you spending quite a lot of time there? You go there almost every afternoon, don't you? I like it there, replied Fern. She wiped her mouth and ran upstairs. After she had left the room, Mrs. Arable spoke in a low voice to her husband. I worry about Fern, she said. Did you hear the way she rambled on about the animals, pretending that they talked? Mr. Arable chuckled. Maybe they do, he said. I've sometimes wondered. At any rate, don't worry about Fern. She's just got a lively imagination. Kids think they hear all sorts of things. Just the same, I do worry about her, replied Mrs. Arable. I think I shall ask Dr. Dorian about her the next time I see him. He loves Fern as much as we do, and I want him to know how queerly she is acting about that pig and everything. I don't think it's normal. You know perfectly well that animals don't talk. Mr. Arable grinned. Maybe our ears aren't as sharp as ferns, he said. Do you know what that means to have sharp ears? It means that you, you listen really, really well. Now, I know animals make sounds like kitty cats go meow meow and doggies say woof. But uh, about five years ago, one of my cats started talking and it scared me to death because she was talking in the middle of the night and she said, hello, hello. And uh, ever since then, if she wants my attention or if she wants Steve's attention, she'll say, hello, hello. And she can say, mom, and now. And when I take her to the vet all the way in the car, she'll say, no, no. Isn't that silly? I never knew kitty cats could talk. But if you don't believe me, just Google on YouTube. Cats say hello, and you'll see a cool video. But anyway, of course, uh, Fern hears all different kinds of things in the barn that I wouldn't have, he have heard as a child. I think she really does have sharp ears. So I'm going to read you the next chapter called Wilbur's Boast. Um, do you know what it means to boast? Boasting means like to show off or to brag. Um, if you listen to me read Fox at school, you'll know that the main character was boasting in that book. So I'm going to read this chapter to you now. It's called Wilbur's Boast. A spider's web is stronger than it looks. Although it is made of thin, delicate strands, a web is not easily broken. However, a web gets torn every day by the insects that kick around in it, and a spider must rebuild it when it gets full of holes. Charlotte liked to do her weaving during the late afternoon and Fern liked to sit nearby and watch. One afternoon, she heard a most interesting conversation and witnessed a strange event. You have awfully hairy legs, Charlotte, said Wilbur as the spider busily worked at her task. My legs are hairy for a good reason, replied Charlotte. Furthermore, each leg of mine has seven sections. I hope I say these correctly. The coxa, the trochander, the femur, the patella, the tibia, the metatarsus, and the tarsus. Wilbur sat bolt upright. You're kidding, he said. No, I'm not either. Say those names again. I didn't catch them the first time. The coxa, the trochander, femur, patella, tibia, metatarsus, and tarsus. Goodness, said Wilbur, looking down at his own chubby legs. I don't think my legs have seven sections. Well, said Charlotte, you and I lead different lives. You don't have to spin a web. That takes real leg work. I could spin a web if I tried, said Wilbur, boasting. I've just never tried. Let's see you do it, said, Char said Charlotte. Fern chuckled softly, and her eyes grew wide with love for the pig. Okay, replied Wilbur, you coach me and I'll spin one. It must be a lot of fun to spin a web. How do I start? Take a deep breath, said Charlotte, smiling. Wilbur breathed deeply. Can you take a deep breath? <sighs> now climb to the highest place you can get to like this. Charlotte raced to the top of the doorway. Wilbur scrambled to the top of the manure pile. Very good, said Charlotte. 
Now make an attachment with your spinnerets, hurl yourself into space, and let out a drag line as you go down. Wilbur hesitated a moment. It means he waited for just a second. But then he jumped into the air. Or he jumped out into the air. He glanced hastily behind to see if a piece of rope was following him to check his fall, but nothing seemed to be happening in his rear. And the next thing he knew, he landed with a thump. Oof, he grunted. Charlotte laughed so hard her web began to sway. What did I do wrong? asked the pig when he recovered from his bump. Nothing, said Charlotte. It was a nice try. I think I'll try again, said Wilbur cheerfully. I believe what I need is a little piece of string to hold me. The pig walked out to his yard. You there, Templeton, he called. The rat poked his head out from under the trough. Got a little piece of string I could borrow, asked Wilbur. I need to spin a web. Yes, indeed, replied Templeton, who saved string. No trouble at all, anything to oblige. Oblige means anything to help you out. He crept down into his hole, pushed the goose egg out of the way, and returned with an old piece of dirty white string. Wilbur examined it. That's just the thing, he said. Now tie one end to my tail, will you, Templeton? Wilbur crouched low with his thin curly tail toward the rat. Templeton seized the string, passed it around the end of the pig's tail, and tied two half hitches. A half hitch is like if you tie your shoes, you know, the first thing you do is called a, a hitch. You just do two of those, or half hitch, I mean. Do two of those and you'll make a knot. Charlotte watched in delight. Like Fern, she was truly fond of Wilbur, whose smelly pen and stale food attracted the flies that she needed. And she was proud to see that he was not a quitter and he was willing to try again to spin a web. While the rat and the spider and the little girl watched, Wilbur climbed again to the top of the manure pile, full of hope and energy. Everybody watch, he cried. And summoning all his strength, he threw himself into the air, head first. The string trailed behind him. Let me show you the pictures, here we go. Here's a picture of Templeton tying the string to Wilbur's tail. And then here he is jumping off the manure pile into the air. Look at Will, or look at Templeton is smiling at him. Can you see Charlotte? There she is way up there. Isn't that a great picture? Does he look like he's having fun? I don't know, do you think he can spin a web? I don't know, I wonder what happens next. Let's find out. The string trailed behind him, but as he had neglected to fasten the other end to anything, it really didn't do any good. And Wilbur landed with a thud crashed and hurt, crushed and hurt. Tears came to his eyes. Templeton grinned and Charlotte just sat quietly. After a bit, she spoke. You can't spin a web, Wilbur, and I advise you to put the idea out of your mind. You lack two things needed for spinning a web. What are they? asked Wilbur sadly. You lack a set of spinnerets, and you lack know-how. That means the knowledge of knowing how to do it. But cheer up, you don't need a web. Zuckerman supplies you with three big meals a day. Why should you worry about tra trapping food? Wilbur sighed. <sighs> You're ever so much cleverer and brighter than I am, Charlotte. I guess I was just trying to show off. Serves me right. Templeton untied his string and took it back to his home. Charlotte returned to her weaving. You needn't feel too badly, Wilbur, she said. Not many creatures can spin webs. Even men aren't as good at it as spiders, although they think they're pretty good and they'll try anything. Did you ever hear of the Queensboro Bridge? Wilbur shook his head. Is it a web? Sort of, replied Charlotte. But do you know how long it took men to build it? Eight whole years. My goodness, I would have starved to death waiting that long. I can make a web in a single evening. What do people catch in the Spring Queensboro Bridge? Bugs? asked Wilbur. No, said Charlotte. 
They don't catch anything. They just keep trotting back and forth across the bridge, thinking there is something better on the other side. If they'd hang head down at the top of the thing and wait quietly, maybe something good would come along. But no, with men, it's rush, rush, rush every minute. That means like to so fly in here. <laughs> that means to just keep busy, busy, busy all the time. I'm glad I'm a sedentary spider. What does sedentary mean? Asked Wilbur. It means I sit a good part of the time and don't go wandering all over creation. I know a good thing when I see it and my web is a good thing. I stay put and wait for what comes. It gives me a chance to think. Now these days we might have, might be more than more sedentary. Now this is I'm reading to you on my back porch today and I sit out here a lot more now that we have to be at home a lot. And guess what last night right around dinner time I saw a spider crawling up on the ceiling. So and there was a spider spinning a web right here in this room last evening. Isn't that funny? Well, I, I'm sort of sedentary myself, I guess, said the pig. I have to hang around here whether I want to or not. I'll bet you know how that feels, huh? You know where I'd really like to be this evening, said Wilbur. Where? In a forest looking for beech nuts and truffles and delectable roots, pushing leaves aside with my wonderful strong nose, searching and sniffing along the ground, smelling, smelling, smelling. You smell just the way you are, remarked a lamb who had just walked in. I can smell you from here. You're the smelliest creature in the place. Wilbur hung his head. His eyes grew wet with tears. Charlotte noticed his embarrassment and she spoke sharply to the lamb. Let Wilbur alone, she said. He has a perfect right to smell considering his surroundings and you are no bundle of sweet peas yourself. Furthermore, you are interrupting a very pleasant conversation. What were we talking about, Wilbur, when we were so rudely interrupted? Oh, I don't remember, said Wilbur. It doesn't make any difference. Let's not talk anymore for a while, Charlotte. I'm getting sleepy. You go ahead and finish fixing your web, and I'll just lie here and watch you. It is a lovely evening. Wilbur stretched out on his side. Twilight settled over Zuckerman's barn and a feeling of peace. Fern knew it was almost supper time, but she couldn't bear to leave. Swallows passed on silent wings in and out of the doorways, bringing food to their young ones. From across the road, a bird sang, Whippoorwill, Whippoorwill. Lurvy sat down under an apple tree and lit his pipe. The animals sniffed the familiar smell of strong tobacco. Wilbur heard the trill of the tree toad and the occasional slamming of a kitchen door. All these sounds made him feel comfortable and happy, for he loved life and loved to be a part of the world on a summer evening. But as he lay there, he remembered what the old sheep had told him. The thought of death came to him and he began to tremble with fear. Charlotte, he said softly, yes, Wilbur, I don't want to die. Of course you don't, said Charlotte in a comforting voice. I just love it here in the barn, said Wilbur. I love everything about this place. Of course you do, said Charlotte. We all do. The goose appeared, followed by her seven goslings. They thrust their little necks out and kept up a musical whistling like a tiny troop of pipers. Wilbur listened to the sound with love in his heart. Charlotte, he said. Yes, said the spider. Were you serious when you promised you would keep them from killing me? I was never more serious in my life. I am not going to let you die, Wilbur. How are you going to save me? Asked Wilbur, whose curiosity was very strong on this point. Well, said Charlotte vaguely, I don't really know, but I'm working on a plan. That's wonderful, said Wilbur. How is the plan coming, Charlotte? Have you got very far with it? Is it coming along pretty well? Wilbur was trembling again. 
but Charlotte was cool and collected. Oh, it's coming all right, she said lightly. The plan is still in its early stages and it hasn't completely shaped up yet, but I'm working on it. I bet you can imagine why Wilbur really wants to know what the plan is sooner rather than later. I would if I were Charlotte. When do you work on it, begged Wilbur. When I'm hanging head down at the top of my web, that's when I do my thinking because then all the blood is in my head. I'd be only too glad to help in any way I can. Oh, I'll work it out alone, said Charlotte. I can think better if I think alone. All right, said Wilbur, but don't fail to let me know if there's anything I can do to help, no matter how slight. Well, replied Charlotte, you must try to build yourself up. I want you to get plenty of sleep and stop worrying. Never hurry and never worry. Chew your food thoroughly and eat every bit of it, except you, ex, except you must leave just enough for Templeton. Gain weight and stay well. That's the way you can help. Keep fit and don't lose your nerve. Do you think you understand? Do you know what it means to not lose your nerve? That means don't be so afraid or worry all the time. Yes, I understand, said Wilbur. Go along to bed then, said Charlotte. Sleep is important. Wilbur trotted over to the darkest corner of his pen and threw himself down. He closed his eyes. In another minute, he spoke. Charlotte, he said. Yes, Wilbur. May I go out to my trough and see if I left any of my supper? I think I left just a tiny bit of mashed potato. Very well, said Charlotte, but I want you in bed again without delay. Wilbur started to race out to his yard. Slowly, slowly, said Charlotte. Never hurry and never worry. Wilbur checked himself and crept slowly to his trough. He found a bit of potato, chewed it carefully, swallowed it, and walked back to bed. He closed his eyes and was silent for a while. Charlotte, he said in a whisper. Yes? May I get a drink of milk? I think there are a few drops of milk left in my trough. No, the trough is dry and I want you to go to sleep. No more talking. Close your eyes and go to sleep. Wilbur shut his eyes. Fern got up from her stool and started for home, her mind full of everything she had seen and heard. Good night, Charlotte, said Wilbur. Good night, Wilbur. There was a pause. Good night, Charlotte. Good night, Wilbur. Good night. Good night. Wilbur's kind of like a little kid that doesn't want to go to bed. And Charlotte is not only like his friend in this chapter, but she's kind of like his mom, I think, encouraging him not to worry and, and to get, get his sleep. So if you're listening to Charlotte's Web at, at bedtime, I hope you have a wonderful night's sleep. If you're listening during the day, I hope you have a great rest of the day. And I'll see you next time for our next installment of Charlotte's Web. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.